Tilder! So which one of these 360 watt Cobb LEDs deserves to be in your kit? If you're on a budget and always have available plug-in power, the Godox SL60 hands down wins for best value. It's the cheapest, low fan noise, it's got good colors, and its yoke is quite strong for larger Bowens light modifiers. The Sakani X60 version 2 is in an odd space. It's in the middle ground taking some awesome designs from the Nanlite Forza 60, including its portable battery accessory, while also having the robust yoke of the Godox SL60. The only problem is the LED shifts towards magenta, but actually lands the skin tones right on the line. The Nanlite is quite expensive for a 60 watt LED. You would only buy this if you are a working professional constantly on the job with a steady cash flow and are ready to invest into a family of lights from a single company. At that point, the Nanlite offers great overall build, including a fan off option, great colors, and will be happy alongside its bigger brothers, the Forza 300 and 500. Done, roll that intro. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today, we're gonna pit three 60 watt Cobb LEDs against each other to see which one reigns supreme. And I wanna thank Pergear for sending out the Godox SL60 for me to throw it into this comparison against the Sakani X60 version two and the Nanlite Forza 60. So without further ado, let's get started right away. So the Godox SL60 comes in at approximately $135 around that area, and basically you're just going to get a light, a reflector, the power cords, and a wireless remote. So very bare bones. The Sakani X60 version 2 comes in at approximately $170, and you're going to basically get everything that the Godox has, except you're going to have a carrying case to take it with you. Now, the Nanlite is the most expensive, coming in at approximately $290, and you're gonna get the same thing as a Sakani X60, except for the wireless remote. You can either purchase the wireless remote on its own, or you can use a smartphone app and control your light that way. So with all that out of the way, let's get to all the tests. First up, we have the three lights without their reflectors, and the Godox coming in at noticeably the brightest, the Nanlite coming in second, and the Godox coming in last. But honestly, I would say that they're within reason with each other, that it's probably not gonna make a huge difference in terms of how you use these 60 watt lights for your set. Next, we have each LED with their respective reflectors. And the Sakani, again, comes in at being the brightest, and then the Nanlite, and then the Godox. Now, the Godox doesn't focus the beam as much towards the center. It actually has a smoother fall off, whereas the other two have a much sharper fall off when you're using the reflector. Next, let's take a look at the color quality based on the vector scopes. Now, if you're not on a computer, I know this is super hard to see. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to blow two of them up and I'm gonna switch back and forth between a couple so you can see how they compare. First up, let's compare the Godox on the left and the Forza on the right. And basically I'm comparing these two because they are the most color accurate out of the bunch based on these charts. So I would actually say the Godox is the overall winner in terms of color. It's the most balanced. If you look at the color chips, they're all pretty much pointing at the, their respective boxes and the skin tone is pretty much on the line with some of them veering very lightly towards yellow. The Forza definitely has the better skin chips, but they're cyan and blue is pointing a little bit off from their respective boxes. Now you probably just saw a sudden shift here as we went to the Sakani, and that's simply because the Sakani is not the most color accurate in that it did shift off towards magenta altogether. Now the weird thing is is that even though the Sakani does shift off to magenta, the skin tone is pretty much right on the line, and the yellow and red seems to be okay, and everything else is just a little bit off. So the real question is, if your skin tone is on the line, do any of the colors really, really matter in most cases? In my opinion, the Godox is the overall winner. So on the right side, I'm gonna flip between the Forza and the Sakani so that you can see where the Sakani is shifting in color.
For the fan test, I actually had each light on for approximately 15 minutes to get as hot as possible. So what's the bottom line here? Out of these 360 watt Cobb LED lights, which one do I recommend? Now, unfortunately, it's not cut and dry because all three of these excel in different areas and you kind of just have to ask yourself which one is more important to you. So for me, I'm gonna try to break this down as best as I can. So let's start with my favorite category, the budget to value. In terms of budget to value, it's a no brainer that the Godox SL60 is the clear winner here because not only is it the cheapest, but the color reproduction is actually not that bad. It's pretty good. And the fan noise, because it's larger than the other two, the fans are bigger inside. Therefore, it's giving a whoosh sound rather than a whirring sound. Now, the only con to the SL60 is that it's not readily available for battery operation. If you're going to try to battery power this thing, you basically have to get a camping generator. Now, I know some of you will probably look at the overall light output and say, well, it's not, it doesn't give as much output as the Sakani or the Forza 60, but it's pretty much within 100 lux. And to me, if there's only that much of a difference between the three, that's not really enough for me to say, okay, this light is not good. I need that extra 100 lux. Not a big deal when you're talking about this category. Now the Sakani X60 is a in a very weird category because as far as its price point, it's right in the middle. As far as its build quality and feature set, it's literally right in between these two because it takes stuff, stuff from the Godox SL60 and it takes stuff from the NAND light and kind of mishes it all together. So let's kind of break this down because I feel like this is a really good budget solution for certain situations. So yeah, we're gonna have to break this down a bit. So. In terms of its build quality, it's small, it's really robust, and yes, you can battery power it, whether with a Sony V-mount battery or using the Nanlite's battery handle. The yoke is also updated to have a rosé lock, so it's taking that from the Godox SL60, so you are able to carry much larger softboxes like the Laufas 47-inch softbox that I recently reviewed. The Nanlite cannot do this, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But, where the Sakani X60 falls quote unquote short is the color reproduction. Because when you took a look at the vector scopes and I was switching between uh, the two, you see it shift off towards magenta. But here's the odd caveat. Because of its shift, the skin tone chips actually land right on the line. So you have to ask yourself this question. If the skin tones are going to land right on the line, do any of the other colors actually matter for my overall production? Because if the answer is no to you, then the Sakani X60 is kind of the best of both worlds. You get a nice small package, powerful light, you just have to deal with the fact that the other colors are not necessarily as great. And then lastly, the fan noise is not as loud as the NAND light. And lastly, we have the Nanlite Forza 60, which is pretty much the most expensive out of the bunch, coming in at $290. And if you wanted to do some similar stuff as the Sakani and Godox, you're gonna have to pay some extra money for it. So basically, if you want to use your existing Bowen's light modifiers, you're gonna have to get a $30 adapter. But that $30 adapter doesn't have a rosé lock on it, so should you use a more heavy Bowen's light modifier, it might not actually be able to handle it. That's when they, uh, that's when you put in their proprietary accessories, of which they're proprietary. They're only gonna work for the Forza 60 and nothing else. So when I start saying all that and then also talking about the Godox and the Sakani X60, it's very obvious that the NAND light does not fit the category for the average filmmaker, uh, budget filmmaker especially, because where the NAND light sits is for a working professional filmmaker that's literally filming five, six, seven times a week with multiple clients, and they might even have their own studio space of which clients can come in and film if they're not out and about on location. When you get to that point in your career, if that's what you're trying to build up, generally speaking, these 
um, these studios are going to want to pick one specific company to handle most of their principal lighting, and they might supplement it with two or three other companies for specialty lights. So for their principal lights, Nanlite can fulfill one of them because they do have a wide a range of different types of lights. Same with Aperture, same with Falcon Eyes, Atelitech, obviously Ari, and they all vary in terms of their price ranges. So that's really where the Nanlite is gonna situate itself. Now, saying that, Right now, Nanlite is the only 60 watt that I'm aware of that's in this category. Aperture has announced that they are developing and hopefully will be releasing a 60 watt of their own. So I'm going to be very interested to see how is Aperture going to try to slot themselves between these three? What is its price range? Is it actually going to go a little bit more towards the budget people or is it going to go head to head against the Nanlite? So when Aperture does release that, hopefully I'll get a chance to review it and compare it against these three and see what uh, see how it actually compares. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.